There is a prophetic word from the Lord. I and they that God has given me, we are made for signs and wonders. That is the word of God. It's time to rise. It's time to rise. Today, nothing will stop me. I am going to have my harvest. Come on, everybody. I don't care whether I'm in order or not in order. Whether I'm under protocol or no protocol. Whether it is legal or it's not legal. I am going to get my miracle. If you dare to be out of order tonight, oh God. If you dare to be out of protocol tonight, oh rich God. I tell you, your new season, your new season is here. The Lord said, I'm healing you. The world break down. The saints should break forth for joy. Empire and vigor of vitality, and if Christ ever healed, he can heal today. Yeah. The crusade of the century. Welcome the Archbishop Professor Benson in the Hosa. Hallelujah! 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 Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Shut hallelujah. He came, he saw, and he conquered. We are just human beings. We live at most 120 years and is gone. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Everybody say hallelujah. I just believe that the most important thing in one's life is to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. You can be a champion in any field. If you miss heaven, you wish you were not born. And so, your greatest opportunity on earth is to know Jesus. The world-renowned singer said in one of Billy Graham's programs, he said, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. And I believe that it is important to have things on earth, but the most important thing is to have him who have everything. And Jesus is the name of the person. Sometimes it is not the devil that puts you where you are, but your lack of knowing whom you are puts you where you are. Did you hear what I'm saying? I said, I wish Jesus just appeared in person. Because all that is most important is Jesus. We are just human beings. We live at most 120 years and is gone. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Everybody say hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you so much. I've been blessed since last night. I was telling my executive assistant this morning, I said the message I preached here last night. I woke up since 2.25 this morning and preached it to my people in Africa and to one of our bishops in Tulsa this morning. I just believe that the most important thing in one's life is to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. You can be a champion in any field. If you miss heaven, you wish you were not born. And so, your greatest opportunity on earth is to know Jesus. Uh, the world-renowned singer said in one of Billy Graham's program, he said, take the whole world, but give me Jesus. And I believe that 
It is important to have things on earth, but the most important thing is to have him who have everything. And Jesus is the name of the person. I welcome all of you here to the house of the Lord this morning. We are out here to hear what God has for us that can help us be better human beings and live a better life in the world where men and women struggle every day to live, to succeed, to live, to achieve something, to live, to become doers and not just hearers only. This afternoon, I'm going to take you through a Bible study, if you like to call it Bible study, but I prefer to teach when I come to a church like Free Gospel like this, because I believe that faith comes by hearing the word of God. And if you want anything to last in people, plant it as a seed that they will never forget. So turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. I want to deal on an important subject this morning. What I call, I gave it two titles for the person producing the program. The first title of the message is Light for your darkest hour. How many of you would like to have light in your darkest hour? And you know whom Jesus said he is? He's the light of the world. You need him in your darkest hour. Or what I call my second title, God can relocate you from where the devil put you. If I say this at home, they will shout. I said, God can relocate you from where the devil put you. How many of you want to be relocated? You're tired of being in prison. You know what location is? How many of you know location? You know where you live? Some of you live in good houses, and some of you live in slums. Some of you live in dirty areas. Some, when I first came to America for the first time, Bishop, somebody said to me, these are the black people's area. It was very easy to know the way they described it. I see some blocks lifted and put some plank on top of it with roof. They say black people's area. But thank God that God does not look at us the way man look at us. And let me say this before I, I go to the message. Sometimes it is not the devil that put you where you are. But your lack of knowing whom you are put you where you are. Did you hear what I'm saying? Many times, many times, people of my color like this, they say the white man made me what I am. It's not true. It's your brain. It's your brain. My skill is my jaw. I love my color because I know my color. The man who called me gave me my skin and I love my skin. Because the Bible says, God made them in his image and likeness. If nobody like you, you like yourself. Somebody say hallelujah. Just begin to learn how to like yourself. And if you look at the mirror, say, wow, who? Is that me? Oh my God. Made in the image of God. Somebody say hallelujah. Every money. I go to the mirror and said, God, you did something good. <laughs> something good. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I, 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 and then to increase my joy, the Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. And I just look at my feet and say, beautiful. Because I preach the gospel, beautiful. It, now you have to learn. Before you ask people to love you, you have to love yourself first. And no man... Baramila, no man can demean what Christ has esteemed. If Jesus esteemed you, no man can demean you. But if you look at yourself, oh, I'm a black man, so I'm stupid. It's not because you are black, you are stupid because you want to be stupid. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? I live in Africa. I have staff from nine countries. 
Nine nations. My stars are from nine nations. Black, white, green, yellow, whatever color you want to call yourself. I thank God I'm not white. I thank God I'm not black. Did you hear what I'm saying? 1962. The year you started this. I was weeping in my room. I said, God, why am I black? Look at me. You don't use any black man. And God said, are you black? I said, yes. Sir. I didn't know. <laughs> 33 years ago, God said, I didn't know you are black. I said, why? He said, because I never met a black man. Oh, God. I said, why did you not make black man? He said, because every man I made, I made in my image and likeness. Don't let people talk you to senselessness. You don't want to go to school because you are black. You don't want to do a good job because you are black. Get out of where people put you and go to where God sent you. Somebody say hallelujah. Get up and be whom God wants you to be. Get up and be like Jesus. Wake up and be like God. Look at yourself and say, I'm beautiful. I'm handsome. I'm a child of God. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Nobody's like you in this world. Amen. You're a special specimen. God doesn't have two people like you. So when somebody look at you and say, you black nigger, say, you, me? You're wrong. <laughs> Tell them they are wrong. And don't behave like what they call you. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? That your song just now can win world prize. Don't wait for anybody to promote you. Take it everywhere and say, this song can do you good. This song can do you good. Yes, you know how Muhammad Ali beat every boxer in his time? Yes, he looked at them and said, I'm going to knock you out. Yes, You're going down round five. Yes, right. After round three, the people begin to say, one more round before he knocks me out. <laughs> <laughs> one more round. <laughs> because he told them, Ali was a prophet of knockout. And you can prophesy to where you are going in this world. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't, don't look at yourself and say, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, oh my. I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming back here sometime. I'm, I'm going to come back here. I want to come back here. If Jesus give me the time, I'll try to be back here next year. I want to be back here. You know, when you look at yourself, you are looking at God in human form. A doer of impossible things. And you know, when you want to move, when you want to become small, begin to talk to small people. If you want to become great, look for great men and talk with them. If you want to be big, hang around a big man. If you want to be great, stop talking with mean people. Start. Don't. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. When Go you ahead. come to Africa, you'll be embarrassed to see what God has done. We who, because people told me I was like monkey, I began to look like God. Because I don't want to look like monkey. And as God will have it, the government of my country began to open the door for the Americans to come to Africa and buy all the monkeys. So most of the monkeys in Africa, they are now in America. <laughs> Did you hear me? <laughs> my children have never seen snake. They hear of it. They never seen it. All the snakes have been brought to America. They've gone to England. When people say you are ugly, make yourself beautiful. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm after this morning. When they say you are lazy, determined to be strong. Yes, Lord. And tell yourself not what they say, but what I want to be. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? You just tell yourself. Tell yourself. I will never be what you want me to be. I'm going to be what God says I am. 
I will teach you a chorus this evening. One of the choruses I composed. He says, I am what God says I am. I'm a winner, I'm not a loser. I'm on top and not at the bottom. Yes, Lord. I'm a conqueror, not defeated. Amen. I'm on top and not at the bottom. Yes, I am whom God says I am. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Acts chapter 12, the Bible. Oh Lord. Only one thing I have never succeeded to do in my life. One single thing. I've done many things in my life. Only one thing I have never succeeded to do. Point your hand to me say, what is it? What I refuse to do. That's the only thing I've never done in my life. Once I say I want to do something, do you know what the Bible says? You are in the image and likeness of God. Do you think Jesus will wake up now in Maryland, today, Sunday, and say, I'm not well? You think Jesus will talk like that? Please respond back. You think Jesus will wake up and say, I don't know how I feel? I'm asking you. You think Jesus will wake up and say, well... The government is shut down, so I'm shut out. You think Jesus will talk like that? Clinton and Doe may be shut down, but Jesus is alive. You know, people come to me, Debbie, they say, I hear so many bad things about happening in Nigeria. I say, you heard from wrong people. If you want good news, see me. I'm the ambassador of good news. Oh God. Oh Lord. Chapter 12. Everybody say Acts 12. Verse 5. Say it loud. Acts chapter 12. Verse 5. Now say the two together. I didn't hear you. Okay, read it loud. One to go. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. And, but, but, but. Say that everybody, but. Say that everybody, but. For every negative, there's a positive but. Not how you got to prison, but how you are going to get out of prison. Yes. The man who sent you to prison is not important, but the man who brings you out is most important. Yes. How you fell, Mama Green. How you and I fell is not important, but how we get up is very important. Peter was put in prison, but, oh God, oh Lord, Peter was put in prison, but, but, but what, but what, but what, but what, prayer was made. Somebody shout hallelujah. The key to getting out of prison is not crying in the prison. Did you hear what I'm saying? When you want to get out of prison, you don't cross your feet and begin to, Oh God, oh devil, oh Satan, oh darkness. No, Peter was put in prison. P-U-T, put, but... Prayer. Listen to my English. I'm a professor in the university. Prayer was not, prayer was not borrowed. Hear my English. Prayer was not borrowed. Prayer was made. All right, all right. Woo. That's right. Oh, 
Prayer was made. It's time for you and I to manufacture solution. Don't look for solution. Create a solution. Because if you're looking for a solution, that is the answer somebody has made. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Don't look for a solution. Create a solution. Don't look for remedy. Make a remedy. Say to yourself, I've stayed long enough in prison. It's time to get out from prison. Can anybody say hallelujah? hallelujah. But prayer was made. They didn't look for good Anthony. They didn't look for Sapiro. They didn't look for Cochrane. They didn't look for Dodin. They didn't look for Masha Clark. They didn't look for the, the winning team. They didn't look for the team of fighting lawyers. When they saw Peter in prison, they said, Oh, is that what you did? You killed James. Fine. You killed Stephen. Fine. You now want to kill Peter. No. Every time men are tired of problem, they can find solution. The worst thing you can do to yourself as a young man is for you to agree that where they put you in prison is a good place. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. I said, did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Press give you wrong figure of how many black young men are in prison, you take it. How many black women are prostitutes? You take it. It's time for you to say, fine, if every black person is in prison, I'm not going. <laughs> Did you hear what I'm saying? So if they say, 200 black men in prison, say, I'm not there. Are you there? Are you in prison? The problem is not what your neighbors say. It is what you do. When we started our ministry a few years ago, they said, it's going to last for five weeks. That's what they told me 36 years ago. They said it will last for five weeks. Well, take five weeks out of 36 years. You still have 36 years. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What of those who told me I couldn't? Do you know what they said? They said, he can't make it. And immediately they say, you cannot make it. I say, it's true, I can't. But God can. I can't. I can't. Eleven years, I believe what they said. And I was behaving like what they said. When you say they can't, I say I cannot. Why? Because they said so. Twenty-five years ago, God said you can do all things through Christ. I got up one morning, I said, and I am now a possibilitarian. I refuse to be what you call me. I refuse to be whom you say I am. I am whom God says I am. Can somebody say amen? amen. Verse 5. Peter was put in prison. But prayer was made. Prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him not to the white house but to the most high every time we are in trouble financially we are looking for food stamp every time you are in trouble you are looking for green card Every time you have financial problem, you want to become a Democrat. There's a power bigger than party. And the name of that man is Jesus Christ. Prayer was made by the church. Unto God. Without season for him. Look at verse 6. Read it with me. When Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping 
between two soldiers. Look at me, everybody. Remove, raise your head up. Sir, Peter was bound with chain in prison. But Peter's body was in prison. His spirit was not in prison. May I repeat what I'm saying? Peter was in prison, but prison was not in him. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Peter was chained and put in prison. But Peter said, oh my God, I've never had vacation for the last one week. Oh, praise the Lord. You can sleep in your darkest hour. You can sleep in your darkest hour. Peter was not looking for who no Herod. The Bible said Peter was sleeping. For I pray that that day will come. When the enemy thinks they've done you harm, God will do you good. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? When man chain you by hand and feet, you free your spirit. Bishop Green, Peter slept in prison. And Peter was sleeping in prison between two soldiers. Soldiers were holding their gun. You can't move. Peter said, I'm moving nowhere. I can hear the soldier say, how are you able to sleep? Peter said, you are the one in prison, not me. You know, Peter have never had the privilege before to be guarded by two soldiers. Oh, you don't know the meaning of that. It's the first time government paid soldiers to guard Peter. He's never had bodyguards. And government gave him two. And now Peter said, okay, if you can guard where I am so I can sleep while you are walking. Do they understand English? You think they are hearing what I'm saying? If I have two bodyguards, there's no need for me to have sleepless nights. You watch over me while I do the sleeping. Okay. <laughs> Peter, are you not afraid? No. Why? I have bodyguards. He began to sleep. And when God saw that Peter was not panicking because of Herod, 